Hello, welcome back. Uh, first, I'd like to give my apologies for uh, the lack of updates over the past few weeks. Uh, to be honest, I got a little bit frustrated with YouTube, uh, the algorithms and all the rest of it. You put a lot of time and effort into uh, shooting a video like this, then you spend hours editing it on a computer and uploading it, and uh, it gets hardly any views or when it does get views and people put stupid comments on about what kind of music you use uh, it gives you no incentive to keep going so to be honest uh, I wasn't going to bother doing any more videos uh, but I thought no it's not fair it's not fair on the uh, 160 odd subscribers that uh, the channel's gained at the moment uh, so I must be doing something right so I just keep plugging away at it so uh, as you've just seen anyway in the opening shots uh, this new Engage layout has uh, changed slightly over the last few weeks. Uh, so far, I've uh, ballasted quite a bit of the track at the front of the layout, and as you saw, I've made a start on the scenery. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to give you a quick tour to uh, the methods that I've been using to make the uh, the rock formation. So uh, let's crack on. Right then, uh, this layout I've decided to go back to old school way of doing things so here we have chicken wire I've got a big roll of it for seven quid from my local Wilkinson's uh, 10 meters so there's more than enough to do the layout and then because I like to experiment with things this is carpet underlay and here's an offcut that I've got here this is the uh, stuff that's made oops I've just knocked the logo over there over there uh, this stuff's actually made from bits of sponge. I think it must be recycled from uh, like car upholstery and stuff like that, sofas and things. But uh, yeah, there's different bits of sponge in here. But as you can see, it's quite flexible. But what's uh, pretty good about it is that there's no weight in it. It's quite lightweight. So what I've done, I don't know whether you can see very well over here, uh, but you can just about make out there's bits of wire in there. Now what I've actually done is I've stitched. I physically stitch this to the inside of the chicken wire frame so you can sort of see the shape of the landscape over here and it looks quite convincing actually if I kind of just come back around there uh, it gives you an idea uh, there's a flat spot here I'm hoping to eventually get the uh, the Vassen uh, church that sits on the top of there so that'll be a long term but that's where that's gonna go but what I've done is like you say I've, I've attached that to this this bit's just been left open uh, so I can work on the tunnel underneath and then what I've done, done is it's been overlaid with ordinary builders plaster uh, as you can see it kind of it does bend a little bit it does bend a little bit so then because we're on a budget I'm just going to move down here this uh, started life as a pair of uh, jogging bottoms that I basically wore to death uh, so what I've done rather than chucking them out is they've been recycled so I've been cutting strips of this stuff and then what I did here as you can sort of see I actually soaked it in plaster and I bonded that to this when this was still wet so as you can see this is a little bit more solid so that's uh, how we built up the basic frame for that and then if I come back up here to the rock face this was done using the tin foil method which I'm going to do a little demonstration in a moment uh, but as you can see this is just rock hard this doesn't move uh, but what's really good is it's it's all hollow because uh, the key thing with this layout is I need to keep the weight down so that I can drag it in and out the garage if I want to uh, operate the thing outside uh, so yeah that's the scenery sort of side of it uh, down here if I just chuck that under there uh, the ballast still needs fettling a little bit uh, I went with the Woodland Scenics uh, buff coloured ballast excuse me uh, because some of the videos that I've been watching uh, as far as I could see the, the track was uh, oh I've lost my train of thought yes the, uh, the it was Wooden Sleeper track so I thought right well we'll go for the Wooden Sleeper track and uh, the, the ballast colour seemed to be this buff colour but then in other videos I've seen it as a grey so what I might do is uh, when we're a little bit more organised I might actually go over this with a bit more of the, the light grey just to give it a bit of variety and then we'll weather the tracks in uh, but yeah we're getting there uh, over here 
I thought I'd have a go at doing a little bit of a landscape just to uh, kind of spur me on really uh, when you're sort of looking at something like that over there and you think well, we've got a lot to do but then you can kind of look over here and you think well actually it's going to look pretty cool when it's done uh, it gives you that incentive to keep going so uh, these rocks down here these were the the stuff that was made from the insulation board there's a bit of it there like uh, but to be honest this this method I found much easier to use because uh, like I say you can kind of sculpture the the, it's the scenery there with the, uh, the the chicken wire so you're physically uh, doing the landscape as you want it and then what is good is is once you've got this attached to it you can still mould it around till you get that shape that you're really really happy with uh, but moving around uh, the last couple of days I've made this tunnel this is just 3mm Formex and what I've done is uh, you can sort of see the whole thing's moving I need to fasten it in once it's been painted and that uh, but what I wanted to model was uh, the inside of the tunnel if I just kind of pull the coaches out the road and see if the camera will zoom in uh, you can sort of see you've got the little recesses uh, the little refuges rather for the the workmen to jump into if there's any trains passing so I really wanted to capture that and I wanted to be able to sort of look at it from the front and look through the tunnel and see all of the detail inside so the only option was to actually model the whole tunnel uh, so it's going to be fun I'm going to have to uh, attach the catenary to the inside of this as well because the pantographs on the logos hit it but all in all I'm quite pleased with that uh, so there's another one to go up here, I haven't decided what style of tunnel mouth's going here yet because obviously there's a rock face. Uh, so I'll just keep plugging away at it. Uh, one good thing about modelling in Switzerland is the grass in the summer is this really psychedelic green colour so you can just get away with using bog standard grass mat. So I'm just going through the scrap boxes and digging out bits of scrap grass mat off previous layouts and uh, just clagging it on. This is actually uh, the dust coat over the top of some matte black spray paint uh, to tone it all down. Uh, the trees, I've actually pinched the trees off Wembleston just to give an idea of what it's going to look like. Obviously I've got to have to get something a little bit more to scale. Uh, I'd imagine this is going to take a few hundred trees to finish so it's going to work out quite expensive in the long run but uh, you know there's no rush to finish it. Uh, but over here you can see the, the gorge taking shape again this is all plastered up and ready to go uh, we've got the the little Swiss loco sitting up there at the top so there's a bridge to go there there's a bridge to go there and then there's this one to finish detailing and then obviously there's the, this one down here I still haven't decided what I'm going to do to it so uh, yeah that's that bit uh, over here just move along here I uh, forgot to mention the helix over there has, has been sorted out. I've still got to lay the track on it. Uh, but this side has been a bit of a pain. Uh, I couldn't decide how I was going to get the track to come up. And after much uh, chewing on for a couple of days with various plans and bits of paper and such like, I uh, came up with the idea that that line there is going to come up here, it's going to swing round, and it's actually going to double back on itself, and then it's going to swing back round here and then it's then going to come up and it'll be on this this sort of level here so there'll be another line here which will run into a tunnel and then that will then go around a double helix to come out onto the top level and then the top level is going to come out towards this and then it's going to then go that way <clears throat> so I figured that was the best way so that I can get the the natural slope of the hillside kind of going up so uh, yeah it's going to look pretty cool so anyway that's enough waffle, let's have a look at uh, making some rocks out of plaster. Right, first job is to remove all the stock and cover over the track. Uh, just a quick look over here. My model of the North Circular is now doing a good representation of Vic, Berry, Vic Berry's uh, yard. Uh, but at least the stock's out of the way now. One day I'll have a big shed and then the whole of this lot can go up permanently. Right, uh, just plump the camera there. So basically, plaster. Just plug a bit of plaster on. Actually it's probably easier with a brush. Let's 
plug a bit of that on with a brush. Cut the piece of tin foil. Right, so you take your tin foil like that and you, you crumple it up like so, and then it's just a matter. Then it's just pushing that over the top. So you kind of just push that, push that like that. Right, here's another method you could try. Again, take your tin foil to kind of fold it into strips like so. idea is that this should look a little bit like the strata that you get in the rock so I think what I might do is cut that in half and this one bit more plaster on. And again you just take your tin foil and kind of overlay it. I think we might put that at a bit of an angle. So again kind of just push that into the plaster. And really all you're doing is you're kind of just moulding it mold it with your fingers I think this one will leave this to dry and we'll see what it looks like when it's done but you can kind of see the shape emerging again just a little, little dab with a brush just to kind of push the, the wet plaster into all the creases so we'll see how that one comes out when it's dried. So just work our way along. We'll just move the camera across a bit.
be enough so again kind of just try to get that at an angle I think something like that would look pretty good cool. Right, so what we'll do is we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back to that in a bit and we'll see how well it looks. Right, let's move on to the next section. Right, while we wait for the section down here with the tin foil to dry, let's just quickly look at this. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the uh, carpet underlay, uh, which I did have a scrappy offcut somewhere. This is the carpet underlay that's been overlaid with the plaster. Uh, just want to point out as well before I forget is you, you notice this carpet underlay has got two sides to it well I found out this stuff's waterproofed uh, so what you need to do is if you're very careful if you peel away one of the surfaces like that right and then make sure that the sponge side is up against the uh, chicken wire when you do it and then what happens is the plaster if you make the plaster mix very very wet it soaks into the sponge and then it forms a good base but on the underside you're left with this padded surface so that you don't bang your knuckles or anything on it when you're underneath the baseboard so there's a tip for you uh, just make sure you take one of the edges off right okay okay here's a piece of the joggy bottom I've got the fluffy side that way around so what I've done with this is I've just watered the plaster down and I've just mucked up my new t-shirt so I've had to get changed but uh, yeah as you can see I've watered the plaster down a little bit more so we just soak this give this a good soaking with the, uh, the plaster mix on the back this is how not to, to build the model railway maybe I should change that to the tags and then I might get more views right so I just clag clag that to the back of there to make sure it's nice and wet and then the other thing we need to do is obviously soak this again I'm just hoping that this will actually stick with the same strength as the other piece had. Uh, so we we'll find out when it's dried. So basically we'll just paint on this plaster. Nice wet plaster mix under there. So we'll just overlay the cloth over the top. Having priced up the, the mod rock stuff and all the other stuff that you get from the scenery suppliers, this has got to be a cheaper alternative and it works just as well from what I've found. And as we're on a budget, that's what this channel's hopefully going to be about is uh, how to build a model railway on a budget. So if we now plaster over the top of that. like making mud pies when you were a kid right be careful not to get it in the, the track ballast at the top of there
I might actually trim that bottom section off when it's dry and hopefully what should happen is the wet the, whoop, the, the water and the plaster should go through and uh, impregnate the plaster underneath with a bit of luck and it should all go rock hard when you when it sets so I'll just clag a bit more over the join uh, two arms okay right and then what we'll do is we'll leave that section to dry and we'll see how we go with it right let's see what happens when we pull this off actually looking pretty cool actually so I see the, the little marks in the rock I think that should look pretty good when it's painted up let's pull this other piece off oh, just a bit of luck That's looking pretty good though. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. You can sort of see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can kind of see the the little sort of lines in that that you would expect to see in uh, in the rock. Uh, so once it's painted and everything and the you highlight the sort of holes and stuff like that I think it'll look pretty good right so let's uh, use up the rest of this plaster I've still got a bit, of, a bit of plaster left in there going off so I think what we're going to do is we're going to clag it down here on this other section just to finish it up well I was going to use up this plaster but uh, it's set a little bit quick so I think we'll have to go and mix up another batch so I'm back in a minute right let's just clag this last little bit on I think there's one of the it's a wire where this is tied to the bottom of this uh, all I did with the chicken wire by the way uh, is I just uh, drilled a series of holes along the edges and what I did is I just put uh, some jewellery making wire through to physically tie this to the baseboard so as it's all nice and secure but anyway that's enough of that waffle just clag a bit of this on finding is this is actually much more creative than just simply hacking it out of bits of insulation foam uh, it's actually less messy it's easy to clean up as long as you don't spill it down your brand new t-shirt of course but, uh, yeah much easier so we just cover this with a plaster mix Tub. So I'll just get my paintbrush. And then I found the easiest way. Helps when you look through the viewfinder, but move the tree. Easiest way is just to sort of stipple the brush into it like that. Kind of just move it around a little bit push that up into that bit and you can kind of see the, the landscapes just taking shape in front of your eyes so push that round to the base of the bridge to be careful 
careful with this bit and I want to get it on the track. That's to the edge of where the ballast is. quite decided yet whether I'm going to put the road through here or not. I think I'll have a better idea when it's all dried and painted up. But that's the, uh, that's the river bank in. I need to put a bit more stuff under there. I'll we'll put a bit around the base. This is the bottom of the, the waterfalls which will kind of come down. So there you go, that's basically it. Right, so to recap, and yes I did change my t-shirt, uh, I didn't want to knack it up, it was a Christmas present so it's uh, been thrown quickly in the washing machine, uh, but yeah, quickly recap, over here, start off, chicken wire, carpet underlay, tied to the underside with jewellery making wire, it's been coated in plaster, it's then been overlaid with the cloth, with plaster mix. Down here we've used the tin foil into wet plaster and we've let that dry and you can see it get various different textures. Uh, some of this I might have to redo. Uh, I might definitely have to redo this corner when I put the tunnel miles in. Uh, if I just swing back around here you'll know the platform surfaces which I forgot to mention before have been put in. Uh, these are 5 mil Formex I'm not sure whether to go with the low continental platforms or whether to go for the British style uh, being this is a hybrid layout uh, jewellery still out on that one uh, another little thing that I forgot to mention was that uh, I've had problems previously with an N-gauge layout uh, with the track distorting really really bad in the heat so what I've done is with this one is I've laid, once I've laid the track and the ballast has gone off, I've actually slit the track into 120 mil sections, I've cut right through the rail and then what I've then had to do is solder dropper wires onto each section of track and if you kind of look underneath there's a load of bus bars where they're all soldered to but we will uh, we'll discuss that in a future episode because uh, I know this one's running on a little bit longer uh, but that will allow the track to expand without any problems uh, just come back up here. Uh, the mountain was actually painted with uh, tester pots from Wilkinson's, uh, mixed in with a bit of acrylic. Uh, getting the colour right has been a bit of a pain. Uh, there's a lot of Swiss layouts uh, use like different uh, tones of grey, but the area that I'm modelling, the, the rock seems to have the sort of pinky brown texture to it, so I'm just experimenting with colours at the moment. That was another reason for doing this little corner of the layout before we progressed but uh, yeah on the whole it's getting there you can sort of see the, the landscape taking shape uh, like you say there'll be a church on the top of there this will kind of ramp up uh, I want a few buildings on the top of there as well uh, I'm not sure about the design of the station yet but you know there's no rush to do it hi so anyway this is Dave signing off. I'll try to uh, do the end properly this time. Uh, so yeah, if you like the video, please click the little like, 
please share, uh, please subscribe, I could do with a few more subscribers and if you click the little bell icon at the top you'll get the notifications. So for now, uh, cheerio, we'll see you next time. Ta -ta. Well, just as a little postscript on the end of the video, I thought I'd just add this on. This is the uh, rock face that I did in the video with the tin foil, and I've literally just thrown some paint on it, and uh, it's come out quite well actually. Uh, there's a few bits of greenery down there. They're just scrappy bits of grass mat that I've stuck underneath, and a few little bits of greenery that were left in the box but I think once this is being finished off it should look really cool like just need to add a few more highlights to it and a bit of weathering well there you go that's how we did a rock face and over here uh, this is what I got from Wilkinson's this afternoon velvet mocker it's like of a sort of pinky colour I used that as a base and then what I did is I then over painted it with uh, brown acrylics and then we just got these other little tester pots and then what I did is kept wiping it off with a cloth and then I got this rubbishy Wilkinson's paint but I went over it again with that and then wiped it off and that added the black bits in the cracks but uh, as you can see the, the effects the effects pretty good like so I think we'll leave it there for today so thanks for watching and for now cheerio